Welcome back. There is a young entrepreneur that is breaking all kinds of barriers. She just launched her first ever luxury line of hijibs at a major U.S. retailer. Please welcome the CEO of Henna and Hajibs, Halal Ibrahim. Hello. Hi, good morning, Jason. Thank you. I've, I've been so excited to talk to you. We shot promos for this last week, and I had a big old smile on my face because I love anyone. I am a... I am a product of someone um, uh, of a dream that I followed. So I love anyone that does this. Have you always, let me start with this. Have you always been interested in fashion? I have been and I uh, was always one to wear really beautiful hijabs and look for them. And uh, the company really started out of a need that I noticed. So um, I've always been passionate about fashion and healthcare and uh, H&H was the solution to all of that. <laughs> And so you started making these. So take me through, obviously, uh, in, in a, uh, a TV segment, we can't do the full story, but condense it down. How, when did you start making your own? And then how did you get the call from Nordstrom, which, by the way, don't we all love Nordstrom? Um, how did that happen? Um, so I really started the company out of a need that I had uh, experienced shortly after her um, during the Eid holiday and then around high school. And the brand really was born shortly after high school. And um, since then, I've really been curating and designing unique pieces. I've always been passionate about sustainability and making sure um, I knew how the materials I was using was made and where they were being made and in what conditions uh, and the types of materials we were using. And um, fast forward to 2021 and um, I spent the last eight months really working on a project with Nordstrom that hit all of those values that I held within the company and uh, brought me to where we are today. <laughs> and what is that call? I always love whether it's someone winning an award or getting a role in the movie. I always like them to take me to take us the audience to that moment. What was it like getting the call from whomever at Nordy's that this was a go, that your dream, your, and look at you smile, I know that, that, that moment, your dream sitting here in Minnesota is now going to be in Nordstrom stores. What was that like? Take me there. I think that moment was one of the biggest accomplishments for the company, and, and it was really humbling. I think it showcased the representation that was needed. It showcased um, the work that I was trying to accomplish. It showcased that this was something that in 2021, Hijabs aren't normalized in retailers like Nordstrom prior to this launch or um, other retailers across the country. And for me, it just spoke to the work and why it was needed and the empowerment piece of it. I, was, so, I, yeah. I, I didn't mean to interrupt you, but I, I, when you said that, it just kind of hit me. It is the normalization, isn't it? I mean, it is just, and, and that's, people, you know, sometimes roll their eyes when they, when they hear, oh, representation matters. But it really does, because it just makes it, and I hate the word normal, but it makes it every day. I mean, I, that's, that's amazing. And, you know, as, as, a, as, a, as a Muslim woman born and raised here in the United States, and as a, as a black Muslim woman, it, this is my home. This is the only home I've ever known. And so... To me, what my goal essentially is, is to have hijabs as normal as t-shirts. We see t-shirts as like the, the normal thing to wear. And I think hijabs in terms of style and wear is no different from that. I think Muslim women are just like you and me. Yeah, absolutely. And I mean, a hashtag overachiever because you also pioneered. Tell me about the medical, the medical grade hijab, please. Yeah, so in 2019, so I actually um, have an extensive healthcare background. In 2019, um, experienced uh, some moments where I was working in healthcare care. I observed uh, patients, uh, Muslim patients, uh, who were dealing with similar situations as to not having a medical grade hijab available. I also had a couple situations uh, that I experienced and went to the drawing board and created a healthcare hijab. Um, and then approached Health Partners Leadership, which is where I was working at the time, and said, can we bring this to our healthcare system? And uh, really grateful to say that Park Nicollet and Health Partners essentially became the first healthcare system in the country to offer to this, uh, this hijab to their employees and their patients. Now, your collection, let me ask you, as I, I, and is it for anyone, like, uh, you know, culturally speaking, we can wear the scarves in different ways. Am I right on that? Or, or, or talk to me about that. Yeah, so uh, one thing I do clarify is that the um, intention for the pieces that I've uh, designed for Nordstrom are certainly meant first and foremost as hijabs. 
but that doesn't take away from anyone who is not Muslim or anyone who just loves a really good scarf. Um, I have a lot of non-Muslim customers who wear these as sarongs, as head wraps, as turbans, or simply um, like the one I'm wearing in the in the uh, video there. Uh, they wear them as square, um, almost like an Audrey Hepburn style. Um, and 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 so it really is up to each person's fashion sense. But I think the the biggest takeaway that I, I hope people take from this collection is that I hope to empower not only Muslim women, but women across the board. Halal, let me ask you, I know what it was, you know, I'll end kind of how I began. I know what it was like, you know, for all of us in this business, you know, when you hear yourself on the radio for the first time or you see yourself on TV for the first time, what was it like for you? So you told me about the phone call. What was it like when you go into Nordstrom and you see your product on a shelf in a big in a big old department store what was that like for you you know jason it's really interesting i think when you're doing the work and you're really focused on the bigger picture and like just you're into it so much and you're so <laughs> passionate about what you're doing you forget you're like oh yeah this really did happen so it didn't hit me until like <laughs> one day and i'm just like strolling through the store and i'm like oh yeah that mannequin is wearing something that i designed and i think it's just this is like you get this full picture like moment and it just keeps me very grateful and I just um, it inspires me to continue the work that I'm doing and um, even on days when we're so busy and it just allows me to keep going. So that moment, I think to just if I were to describe it in one word, um, I would say it has made me very grateful. Well, I, I, I really hope I get that. You know, you're running around and you, you don't give yourself an opportunity to wrap your brain around it. I really hope my wish for you is that you do maybe this week or next. Take a moment and and really take it in because you're you're a trailblazer. That's over. It's another word that's overused, but you really are. And I'm really proud and honored that you uh, came on our show. So thank you so much. Thank you. And just an FYI, I'm a really big fan of you. So kudos to you. And then following you. Oh, <laughs> thank you. Day, so. Well, will you please come back in? We can have studio guests now. I would love to have you back in studio sometime. You know who to call. I'll definitely be there. <laughs> Absolutely. Thank you so much, Halal. For more information, head to hennaandhijobs.com. Oh, delightful. I love people that follow their dreams. I really do. We're going to take a break. We'll be back right after this. Delightful, delightful, delightful.